Hey guys, Richard Oldner here. Thanks for watching the video and thanks for supporting the channel. The question for today, hey Richard, how do I make 500 horsepower with a stock bottom end 5.3 liter without boost? I'm not going to show you one way to do it. I'm going to show you three. In this video, I'm going to show you not one, not two, but three different 5.3 liter stock bottom end combinations that exceeded 500 horsepower. And the key element there is that they are stock bottom end, stock block, stock crank, stock rods, and stock pistons. And really, the stock pistons is the critical thing when we're talking about stock bottom end motors exceeding 500 NA horsepower because the stock piston limits piston to valve clearance. It also limits the available cam we can use, and smaller cams mean less power. So let's check out three different combinations that made more than 500 horsepower. Hey guys, before we get going on this video, make sure to join me live nightly, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If you've got questions about any aspect, performance, cylinder heads, camshafts, any motor, doesn't have to be an LS, doesn't have to be a small block Chevy, can be a big block, can be a Honda. I've tested it all. If you've got a question, chances are I have an answer or somebody else on the live feed also might have an answer. If you've got a question, remember, join us live, 7 p.m. live on YouTube. Let's get to our video. So to get things started and our three different 500 horsepower, 5.3 meter stock bottom end combinations, we first need to take a look at basically a bone stock 5.3. And this is typical of what I see when we get something from the wrecking yard, when we run it in bone stock, stock trim. And by bone stock trim, I mean it's not stock. <laughs> when we run it on the engine dyno, we run it with no accessories, just an electric water pump. We run it with long tube headers. We run it with a Holly or fast management system and we run it with an open throttle body so no air intake. These things always make more power than they're rated at because we're testing them in a different procedure differently than they do from the factory. So this thing will make more than it's rated at. These are a 5.3 like this, an LM7, excuse me, will typically be somewhere near 300 horsepower, uh, plus or minus rated from the factory depending on what application it's used on. But when we run them, with long tube headers and an optimized tune, and we run them a little colder with no air intake and no accessories and stuff. They make more power. This one made 354 horsepower at 5,300 RPM and 381 foot-pounds of torque at 4,000 RPM. You can see it's got, it's as we would expect of a truck motor, it's torquey. It makes more torque than horsepower, giving us a good indication what these things are really about. They're not designed for like, like an LS1 or LS2 or LS3 to make big power on the big end, they're designed for making more torque and pulling the truck around. But I'll show you what happened on our first combination, and I'm putting these in order of appearance. So this first one is the Big Bang 5.3 liter twin turbo deal that I did for Truck and Magazine. My first Big Bang was the 4.8. We thought it was a 5.3. I did that for Hot Rod. After doing that and making over 1,200 horsepower with a stock bottom end, I decided I actually have to test a 5.3 because thinking that the 5.3 might be able to make more power at the same boost than the little 4.8, we put together a 5.3, but I wanted to put together a good combination that made decent power NA so that we didn't have to run a lot of boosts on the combination to get to a big power level that would ultimately probably break a rod or a piston. And here's the combination that we put together. So you can see compared to stock, it makes basically a lot more power. We were able to exceed 500 horsepower, 502 or 3 horsepower out here at 6,600 RPM. Peak torque checked in at 443 foot-pounds at 5,100. So we had shifted the torque peak a lot. And you can see we've got our, instead of the plateau that we see a lot of times, we kind of have a, a, a dual torque peak there because it made 300 or 438 foot-pounds here at 46 or 700 RPM. These things make good power, and it's important to note, remember, all of these are with the stock bottom end, so stock block, crank, rods, pistons, and the stock pistons are really what limits us from making even more power because there's no valve release. We could put a lot more camshaft in this, but let's go over what this combination was. So again, the stock bottom end, and this was an LM7, so it was a dish piston. It had TrickFlow 215 heads on it, which are actually designed for a slightly bigger bore, but they work very well on this combination. We had a good-sized camshaft in this, and in this case, it was a Comp 281 LRR cam. 
is the Cathedral Port version. It's a, a 54-459-11 camshaft, so a 617-624 lift split, a 231-239 degree duration split at 113 degree load separation angle. We use slightly longer push rods in this because of the trick flow heads. We top this with a fast LSX-RT intake manifold and 102 millimeter throttle body. For the NA combination, we ran inch and three quarter headers with mufflers, but the mufflers don't really change the power when we run it. In fact, they make more of a difference in low speed power because of the length of the collector extension. But we almost always run a collector extension with the header when we run these things. This thing made best power at about 29 degrees of total timing. So again, we have the stock bottom end, LM7, dish piston, so fairly low compression for the truck stuff. The later Gen 4 stuff has flat tops, and it would make a little bit more power on this stock combination. But we basically put heads, cam, and intake on the stock bottom end, and if you put the right kind of camshaft in and good flowing heads and a good intake manifold, this is how we get to the 500 horsepower level. As you can see, we did that here. So now let's take a look at our next combination. Our second 500 horsepower stock bottom end 5.3 liter combination was actually the result of a Big Bang nitrous motor. So much like the Big Bang turbo stuff, what we were trying to find out is how much power you can make with the stock bottom end, but instead of using the turbos to turn the boost all the way up, we want to find out how much nitrous we could deploy, and I'll go ahead and show you <laughs> the result. Here is the result of that, as you can see. Didn't turn out exactly like we wanted, but we were able to make a powerful naturally aspirated combination because just like with the turbo stuff, we wanted to start out with as much power as we could make with a stock bottom end kind of combination and then add lots of nitrous to that, hoping to get to a big number like we were looking for maybe a thousand horsepower or something like that by adding 500 horsepower with the nitrous and you saw the results. But here is the combination that we put together before adding the nitrous to it. And we can compare that again to our stock motor, 354, five horsepower, 381 foot pounds. Here is the nitrous combination. And you can see again, it made over 500 horsepower, 502 horsepower at 6,800 RPM. And torque was nice and flat. 408 or nine foot pounds of torque. Again, not nearly as, and we'll compare all these at the end. We'll compare the different 5.3 liter combinations. You can see we lost power compared to the stock one down below 4,500 RPM. And most of that was because this particular combination utilized a Holly high ram intake manifold. Short, so short runners pushing the power farther out in the RPM scale and losing power compared to the relatively long runner stuff on the fast manifold that we use. But this combination was uh, powerful nonetheless, again, over 500 horsepower, and it utilized a stock bottom end 5.3 liter LM7. So again, the dish piston, we had 30 to 32 thousandths ring gap in it. We again had trick flow heads, but we didn't use the 215 CNC heads, the Gen X heads. We actually used the trick flow as cast 220 heads. Again, more than enough flow to support this power level. In fact, they'll support closer to 600 horsepower than they will 500, according to the airflow. But they were as cast and not CNC ported. Again, we used the high ram and we used, we used it in EFI form and not with carburetors. We did have two 4150 throttle bodies, both of them flowing a thousand CFM, so we had more than enough. And we used those because we were using two plate nitrous setups on them. Again, we used a big camshaft in this. It was a BTR stage four LS3 camshaft, which was a 618 596 lift split, 233 250 degree duration at 50, and 113 plus three on the LSA. Again, this was our baseline for the nitrous combination. Long tube headers, we ran inch and seven eighths headers on this combination and collector extensions. Again, no accessories and an open throttle body, our open throttle bodies, two of them, two 4150s. So this big bang motor, stock bottom end again, made over 500 horsepower. You can see it was kind of shifted more in the higher RPM scale because of that Holly high ram. But again, over 500 horsepower did pretty well. Let's take a look at our next combination. Our final 5.3 liter combination was maybe the most interesting because it didn't uh, utilize aftermarket CNC ported or even the big 220 ASCAS cylinder heads from TrickFlow. This was a strictly performance 5.3 and it's something that they supplied 
in the hopes that I could do a big bang with this motor. Again, all of these things seem to be big bang related. But again, this is our stock uh, 5.3, 354, 55, 381 foot-pounds. But here is the strictly performance motor. And you can see it did exceed 500 right at 500, 501. In fact, here I'll go ahead and show you. When we put a radius entry on the throttle body, I'll go ahead and show you a photo of that. When we put a radius entry on it, it kind of picked up power everywhere, helped the airflow going in. So we were up to 509 horsepower with this combination. So it did very well. Peak torque checked in at 436 foot pounds. Again, and like with the first combination, we have a, our kind of a dual torque peak out there. And we made peak power out here at 6,700 or so, and peak torque came at 5,800. So it was doing pretty well. But look down low, <clears throat> we never made less than the stock combination, and we loaded this thing at 3,100 RPM. So it was doing, doing well. Now, this combination was interesting, as I said, because not because of what it had, but more because of what it didn't have. It didn't have the very expensive aftermarket CNC heads like the trick flow stuff. Airflow also makes good 205 heads. Tony Mammal has some cool stuff. There's lots of good stuff out there. <coughs> but this one, again, stock bottom end, stock block, crank, rods, pistons, ring gap. This one did have uh, flat top pistons in it. So not dish pistons like the LM7. It had flat top pistons like the Gen 4 L80, L33 or LC9 um, or, or the 4.8 pistons basically. And these were hard anodized so that to give them a little bit more strength for boosted applications because that's why they made this motor. This motor was topped by a set of ported 706 heads and they weren't even full like CNC job. That was a CNC porting, but it had stock valve sizes it was kind of their low dollar uh, porting that they offer from K-Tech. And so it, it obviously worked fairly well, but I think of all of the cylinder heads that we tested on these 500 horsepower combinations, these heads probably flowed the less, but as we see, they performed very well. Now, part of that is we had more compression because we had the flat top piston. We also had a fairly good sized camshaft in this like the others. This was a Summit Stage 4 cam, which was a 625-605 lift split a 234, 247 degree duration split, and 113 plus three and a half on the camshaft. We had inch and seven eighths headers. We did have collector extensions and mufflers. We, we ran collector extensions on all the combinations. We had a fast LSXR intake manifold and a 102 millimeter throttle body, which is why it makes such good torque compared to the other combination that had the Holly manifold. So again, this is a good combination and it worked very well. We ended up running this thing with a blower and turbos and all kinds of stuff because that's why that's what it was designed for. But again, easily over 500 horsepower, plenty of torque. And again, the stock bottom end, although this one started with the higher compression version. So now let's compare all three and see what they look like. Okay, guys, I think we proved once and for all that, yes, it is definitely possible to exceed 500 horsepower flywheel with an otherwise stock bottom end 5.3 liter. We did it not once, but three different times. And we showed that all it takes is the right combination of cylinder heads, camshaft, and intake. Starting with a cylinder head, you just need a cylinder head that will support that power level. Does it have enough airflow? Lucky for us, there are lots and lots of good cylinder heads, even for the small bore 5.3, that will allow us not only to make 500 horsepower, but actually closer to 600 horsepower. At least they have the airflow to support that. The thing that limits us is camshaft. There are lots of camshafts available, but we don't have the piston of valve clearance available to us in a stock bottom end without valve reliefs to put enough camshaft in it to push power even further. But there's enough room for us to put a big enough camshaft in it, something in the low to mid 230 range at 50 with the available piston valve clearance to exceed 500 horsepower. Now on the intake side, you need a, an intake manifold that will support that kind of power also, allow us the right RPM range. And as we saw, choosing the fast manifold is kind of the go-to thing for this 
combination of RPM and power. But we saw that something like the short runner Holly High Ram will also make the peak power, but you're just going to sacrifice power down low. Now, the next question should be, well, how can I do this for like less money? What is the low buck option for this? Can I make this kind of power by porting my own heads? As we saw with this, the ported 706 heads from K-Tech, that's certainly possible. I've seen guys do hand porting on their own heads and had really good success. You can put a bigger valve from the 799 or 243 head in the 706 head, do your own porting and get very good airflow, enough to support this power level. Now, can I use like a sloppy stage two cam? Yes, you can. It's a low buck cam. You can put that in and then substitute a Trailblazer SS intake manifold for the fast. You're never going to get to these power levels, but you're going to make a lot of power. Our mature holder, make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More testing coming up.